I've got some hot takes for you when it comes to backpacking gear trends. There have been some staple pieces of gear and technology when it comes to the outdoor industry, like merino wool, nylon tents, 20 inch wide sleeping pads. But I think that these items are starting to fall out of favor while other items are starting to take their place and trend up. This first one might get me some stink and that's because I think that merino wool is trending down. There's a lot of great alternatives out there right now. I do use merino wool, I think it has its place, but not when moisture management is key. Synthetics like nylon and polyester hold on to 90% less moisture than merino wool, which helps with two things. First of all, they dry faster. If merino wool gets wet, it takes a very long time to dry. I've experienced this with merino wool socks when going through stream crossings. The second thing is that when moisture is involved, synthetic materials are gonna keep you warmer because they're not holding on to as much moisture as merino wool. Merino wool is touted as this magic material that keeps you warm when wet. And while it will keep you warm when damp because the moisture is held on the inside of the fibers as opposed to on the outside, as soon as those fibers become saturated and you have moisture on the outside of them, you're gonna start cooling off due to evaporative cooling. And that saturation of merino wool doesn't take very long. Even just sweating a lot is gonna saturate those merino wool fibers. So I think that merino wool is better for static activities or activities where you're not gonna be getting it wet and maybe just a little bit damp, like if you're sweating in your sleep or something like that. If stink is a factor for you, then check out alpaca wool. I'm wearing an alpaca wool shirt right now. It has similar moisture management properties to nylon, but does not stink. I've worn alpaca wool for five days straight of hiking, backpacking, and sleeping, and it did not stink at all. When most people think of tents, they think of an aluminum pole structure with a mesh inner and then a fly that goes over top of that. These are tents that are very easy to find at big box stores like REI or even Walmart. And they're touted as being the most user-friendly as well as the most robust when it comes to weather performance. But I think with the refinement of the design in trekking pole tents like the Durson Exmid that I have here behind me, trekking pole tents are on the rise while traditional tents like the MSR Hubba Hubba are on the decline. I see this trend here in the Canadian Rockies at popular campsites. Five to 10 years ago, 50% of the tents would have been MSR Hubba Hubbas and there would have been very few trekking pole tents. These days when I go to those same popular campsites, a quarter or even a third of the tents that are there are trekking pole tents, which is amazing. Trekking pole tents these days are really easy to set up. After some practice, I can now set up trekking pole tents faster than I can traditional tents. And there's a lot of other benefits as well, such as lighter weight, as well as better performance in rain due to the fact that most of them have all-in-one pitches. So the inner and the fly all pitch as one, so you're not getting the inner very wet. Trekking pole tent manufacturers are also innovating in really cool ways that you're not necessarily seeing with traditional tents. If you want to see the best selection of trekking pole tents out there, check out the sponsor of today's video, Garage Grown Gear. They have over a dozen different trekking pole tents from brands like Six Moon Designs, Hyperlight, Gossamer Gear, and Bonfus. And if you want the best tent stake bag ever, then check out the All Man's Right Holster Sack. It has a wider opening at the top, which makes taking out and putting back tent stakes a lot easier. I'm not joking. This has actually been such a game changer for me. And if you want to check out the All Man's Right Holster Stake Sack, as well as a bunch of different trekking pole tents, then check out Garage Room Gear at links in the description. The third trend has to do with tent fabrics. In the past, high-end tents were made with nylon, while polyester was reserved for cheap tents from brands like Walmart. But modern day polyester is a phenomenal tent fabric that doesn't hold on to as much moisture as nylon and doesn't sag when wet or stretch like nylon does. While traditional tent manufacturers like MSR and Big Agnes are still making a lot of tents with nylon, innovative smaller companies like Durson Gear, Six Moon Designs, and Tarp Tent are making some really cutting edge high-end tents out of polyester. Nylon has been touted as a more durable fabric than polyester, but that difference in durability is marginal. And after a handful of days out in sunlight with UV beating down on the tents, nylon and polyester are gonna be about at the same level because polyester deals with UV light a lot better than nylon does. As more and more people start realizing and identifying the benefits of polyester over nylon for tents, I think we're gonna start seeing more traditional manufacturers start using polyester in their tents, especially when it comes to parts like the fly. My first sleeping pad was 20 inches wide, torso length, and only one inch thick. It was not comfortable. But sleeping pads have come a long way, and we now have four inch thick sleeping pads like the Sea to Summit Etherlite XT. We have innovative baffling systems that are super comfortable, 
and then widths that allow you to toss and turn without falling off the pad. I polled my audience on YouTube and the results were pretty crazy. With 2000 votes, 75% of you said that you use a 25 inch wide sleeping pad, which means that 20 inch wide sleeping pads are on the decline. I use 25 inch wide pads almost exclusively now. The only time that I reach for a 20 inch wide pad is when I'm trying to go as lightweight as possible and I'm spending a lot of time hiking and not as much time at camp and sleeping. With this shift in sleeping pad widths, tent manufacturers need to wake up and kind of get a clue. Most two person tents out there these days cannot accommodate two 25 inch wide pads, especially if they're rectangular pads. And if you can fit two 25 inch wide pads in there, then you don't have room for anything else. You're taking up the entire floor space and it's gonna be very tight. I think the standard for two person tents needs to shift with the minimum width being a minimum of 54 or 55 inches. We need to stop having to buy three person tents in order to comfortably fit two people. If you wanna see my top backpacking tips in order to be comfortable at camp, go check out this video right up here. I provide a bunch of tips in order to help you be comfortable as well as some tips in order to not get murdered by the person that you're sharing a tent with.